In the second tutorial of the series, I will show you how to create the whole smearing effect from scratch and how to add extra effects to make it more dynamic, as you can see on the screen. So we're done with the text layer itself. Now we simply have to drag it to new composition. We're gonna call this text displacement. So this is the comp where the whole smear effect will take place. The main effect we're using is simply CC scale wipe. The way the effect this works is, is basically stretching the layer by using the direction and amount of stretch. So if I do something like 50, now you can see well, how the effect works on the original animation. The problem is every time the text layer changes, we have to update it and adjust it. And I don't want to do that. So this is the part where things get a little bit more technical. We're going to use quite a lot of expressions but all of these adjustments and positioning of all the effects will be taken care of by the expressions. So to create this smearing effect, we have to actually split this up into two sections. First, we have to stretch it downwards, then upwards. And later on, we're gonna add all the little displacement in between on every single one of those strings, you can call it. So how to do this? It's pretty, pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna delete this for a second. I need three text layers. So I'm going to duplicate this three times. Okay, so I have three text layers, just top, bottom, and the main. I'm going to hide main. So by adding CC scale wipe, I need to find where to place the center of my scale wipe effect. So what I need to do is place it at the very bottom, if I turn this off, just slightly above the bottom part of the text layer itself. So the expression for this, it's simply like this. The expression looks a little bit complex, but it's actually using pretty much same parts as we used in the previous part of this tutorial. So let me explain this. So first I have to find my text layer, which is this one. I need to find the text layer composition and the text layer itself. So the way to do something like this is pretty easy. You just open both text layers, drag one to the bottom. For example, let's say anchor point. If I want to reference this layer in here, simply grab the pick whip, point it here, and there you go. This is your source. Okay, I'm just cancel that. So once you have your source, then we can move on to the variables themselves. So this is as previously, um, this is exactly the same expression as we used before. This comp dot height by two, this comp dot width by two. This in array gives us perfect center point for this composition because I want this effect to start always in the center of the composition itself. I don't want this effect to be somewhere to the side because I know this whole setup is about text layer being in the center. That's why I'm using these values to as my starting point for this CC scale wipe center point itself. Then we have to calculate the text size. So I need to know how high this layer is. So again, as with the anchor point expression, I'm using the source rec at time and I'm adding property dot height. This will give me the whole height of this text layer itself. Now I only need to use half of it. So that's why I'm dividing it by two because I want to offset this center point to the bottom of the text layer itself. So once I have those three values, I can calculate where to position this center point so it's only just on the edge of the text layer at all times. So simply I'm defining comp height half, which is this value. This will position the point directly in the center of the composition. So then I need to add half of the text layer height, which will place it at the very bottom. But for this effect to take place, um, to be the most effective, it has to be just over the, the layer you want to affect using the scale wipe. So that's why I'm subtracting 0.3 of the text height half. So that's why this point ends up being here. I by then feeding the comp width half and CC wipe variables, we get perfect position at the very bottom. So if I turn this on, there you go. And you have your stretch. So this is basically how you get this smeared stretched effect with just simple scale wipe. 
Now, this is not strong enough because it only goes to 100 to do a really long stretch. So basically duplicating this effect twice to make it twice as strong. Now I have to do the same thing, but for the top of the text layer itself. So the effect goes upwards. Okay, and to explain this, it's the same effect again, CC scale wipe. What I simply did was use very similar expression. And the only difference is to the previous expression, if I turn this off for a second, it's by calculating comp height half, we have this point over there. Then simply I'm subtracting half of the text height and then adding back in one third of the text height itself to position this point slightly on the edge, just below the top of the layer. So we get this nice, perfect stretch. And again, by duplicating this effect one more time, we get this nice long smear effect happening. So this is how you get the smear text effect. Now to make this more interesting, we have to displace all those line streaks and do a bunch of cool stuff to map the gradient colors to this layer itself. So later on, we can use Colorama to actually color this image from black and white to full color spectrum. Okay, so simply I created a um, shape layer and added two fractal noise effects. Those ones are the options and just modify them a little bit to the scale to my taste. I want them to be kind of soft, but like smeary. And here's the second one. And again, and here's the second one. And again, I play with the scale and height and as well complexity to just make this a little bit different. There's two important things you need to know about this uh, fractal noise. It's if I collapse them, when I turn them, one of them on and off, you can see the second one is being added to the first one. And that's happening because the blending mode is set to multiply. You can play and pick different uh, blending mode itself. But if you had this to none or normal, the second fractal noise would override the first one. So if you want to blend two fractal noise effects itself, you can use like multiply or screen or overlay or, or any other blending modes themselves to combine and make them more complex than they actually are. And the second part of this effect is about the evolution. Simply I added two expressions called time and times 100 and time times 150. By adding those expressions, I have this subtle movement happening on both of the noises themselves. This way, I don't have to mess around with the keyframes. I just let the expression run and the each frame looks totally different. So now we need to take this layer and actually display the text itself. So I'm going to hide this. So simply, I added the displacement map effect to my bottom text layer precomp. I'm using the luminance channel to affect the displacement. Not much is happening because you have to actually activate the effect and mask from the dropdown. And now if I increase this, there you go. The whole thing starts getting really, really like wonky and it starts just getting like being more fluid than just straight lines. And if I duplicate this, I'm going to copy this effect and paste it on the top one itself. Okay, so now we're getting in more interesting results. Now, there is one thing I have to fix before we move forward. Basically, this displacement map is actually displacing the middle of the text layers themselves. And I don't want that. I need to mask this out. So, because later on, when I add text layer to it, as you can see, it's targeting like really, really messy. You can't really tell what is what. So to mask this effect, we can do this in few ways. Um, I will show you how to do this with uh, shape layer and expressions. First, you create the shape layer. And to the size property, you're adding this expression. So again, I'm defining, it's, it's very similar to what we did before. So first of all, I'm defining the, the text layer because we need to use that text layer to calculate the height of it. So then I can mask out the specific portion of the screen. Then I'm defining the composition width because I want this uh, mask to stretch out from edge of the comp to the edge of the comp. Now blur radius, this is basically fastbox blur and this property referenced in the expression itself. I'm going to use this to add extra padding to the height to compensate for this blurriness you can see. 
So we just simply have to calculate the text height. It's this simple expression, which is referencing our source, the text, and then source record time. And just height property gives us perfect height for the text layer itself. And then in the X and Y, I'm feeding in composition width, again, the size of the comp, and text height plus blur radius times two, because I want to make sure blur over here and blur over there gets accounted for. Now I'm adding this fast box blur is because I want this mask to be much smoother than sharp cutout. And I'll show you what I mean. Now to mask out specific portion of our displacement map, I can use this generated mask, but instead of going track mount way, where you can just simply set it to alpha or inverted alpha and so on, simply drop it at the bottom so it's out of the way. I'm going to add a set mat effect. And if I set the set mat effect to displacement mask, we get this. Now I want to make sure I use effects and mask so we have the perfect blurring. I'm going to turn off this layer. And because I want this to be reverse, I simply click invert mat. Now we have perfect masking of our displacement map. And because in the text layers themselves, we're using the displacement map effect, which is using effects and mask. This mask, this part, is already fed into top and bottom. So if I turn this on and off, you can see how this text doesn't get affected as much as here. There is like nice smoother portion. Now we need to add one more effect to the whole top and bottom layers. We need to add gradient ramp. Now this gradient ramp, as you can see, will create a gradient so it will add a bit of depth to the well, text layers themselves. But most importantly, this gradient ramp will be used later on with colorama effect to map different colors across this gradient. So I'm going to turn off the top layer so you can actually see what's happening. So first of all, I'm going to swap the colors. I want the dark color to start at the bottom and the light one on the top. Now again, we have a problem, which is basically, I want to make sure that this gradient always starts a little bit above the text and ends slightly below the ending point or edge of this composition. I don't want to go in and keep adjusting it when the text changes. I want to do this with expressions and I will show you how to do it. I simply added the two expressions, one to start of the ramp, one to the bottom of the ramp. Now let's discuss the start of the ramp. So as before, we define our source, which is the text layer itself then half a comp width, half a comp height, using those two variables, which places the start of the ramp directly in the middle of the composition. Then we have to calculate the, our source text layer height half, so we can offset it a little bit higher, which will basically place it the um, gradient start at the edge of the text layer itself. So this is what's happening here. I'm defining new variable, so later on I can just feed it in into the array at the end, which is basically, I'm taking comp height half, this value, subtracting half of the text layer itself, and then further subtracting a small part of the text layer again, which is 0.3 of the text layer height half. This places the start of the ramp just above the text layer itself. And to the bottom, uh, to the end of the ramp, I created this expression, which was basically comp height and comp width half sliced by two, just only this part. Now I need to calculate new comp height because the comp position height is being calculated from zero to whatever the size of the comp is. So to place the end point of the ramp just slightly above the um, bottom of the comp, I'm simply using the whole composition height and subtracting small amount from it, which is like 0 0.005 of comp height itself. This places this point just over here. So what's happening is basically with this gradient effect, with the gradient ramp, we have the brightest point just above the text layer itself and the darkest point is over here. So later on, I will show you in the second part of this tutorial, how we can map the colors to those uh, values going from brightest to the darkest. Now we have to do the same thing for the top layer. Okay, so I simply copied and pasted the gradient ramp effect and slightly changed the expression. So the 
start of the ramp expression looks like this, exactly the same except now we're simply adding half of the text height, which places the point literally on the edge of the text and a little bit more, which is this part. And this is where the start of the um, gradient ramp is for the top layer. The end expression is slightly more different than the previous one because I want to place this end point slightly on this edge over here. So I'm defining comp height and half of comp width so I can place point directly in the center of the composition. Because the composition height is being calculated from zero, which is well, this line over here, it goes all the way down to whatever the composition size is, in this case, 1080 pixels. I'm simply defining the starting value as zero and adding small percentage of the total comp height. So this way, this whole thing is displaced a little bit down over there. Okay, if I turn this layer on, we have the text main appearing even more. Now to finally blend this even more, the whole transition between two layers, what we can do is we can add, we can add set matte effect and point it at displacement mask using effect and mask and simply invert it, copy it and paste it to the top layer itself. So as you can see by simply using this displacement mask with all the like blur selected to it, we have a nice gentle fade of the text layers to the main one. This was the most technical part of this tutorial. This was kind of an orthodox way to set this up because we could have done this a little bit quicker using track mods, etc. Hope you were able to follow along and in the next tutorial, I will show you how to colorize all of the stuff we just built and how to, you can add all the little details all within After Effects. And so it's totally procedural, resizable, and you can use it to make your templates and so on.